Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Burwell, your host of V Speaks Conversations with Heart and Soul. We started this podcast a couple of years ago as a sister to V Magazine, as we wanted to tell stories more in depth, bring the pages of the magazine to life. And it's been super successful. So today, drum roll, please, I have somebody that you're going to know. Everybody knows him. He's a TV personality, author, multiple winner of James Bond. Beard um, Awards. He is a restaurateur, a philanthropist, husband, father, and a great guy. Emeril Lagasse, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. <laughs> delighted to be here. I'm so delighted to have this you is beautiful. here. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you have a lot going on right now, and a little bit. You, just a little bit, right? A little bit. That's that's kind of been my life, you know. Just uh, it's actually. Um, it's actually a little bit slower these days than than in the past. Uh, pre pre pandemic, it was getting a little hectic. During the pandemic, unfortunately, we we closed eight restaurants. But um, I'm sad by for the people that mm-hmm. uh, worked with us. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm kind of delighted that it, it was like a, a breath of fresh air mm-hmm. in a sense too. Um, and now. What I am doing is in a much more controllable, uh, controllable place. Um, myself and my staff, and you know, key people. I guess, you know, to really answer your question, Lisa, is that it's kind of like a football team, right? Mm-hmm. We want to win the Super Bowl, and I'm just a quarterback. Mm-hmm. But quarterbacks alone just don't win the Super Bowl. You have to have a great team. So I feel like I have a really great team. I have people that are very dedicated, mm-hmm. whether it's the foundation people or whether it's the restaurant people or or partnerships that I have as well. I don't really do anything that I don't want to do. I don't do anything just for money. Right. And I don't do anything just for, you know, for glamour. Mm-hmm. It has to have a lot of heart and soul for me to want to want to do that. Right. Whatever it is. Right. So you landed at a coveted position at the beginning of your career at Commander's, pa- Commander's 1982. Palace. 1982. And how long were you there for? I was there for just almost eight years. Okay. In the last five years of my stint there, I also was the chef and the general manager of the okay. restaurant. So okay. I ran the restaurant for the Brennan family. Okay. Um, that was probably more of a learning experience for me. Even though that I contributed from the chef's perspective, um, and feel like I really raised the bar uh, of the restaurant, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I really, I really believe that. And mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I went. I was very young, of course, and I was like twenty six. Tw- wow! And um, yeah, I really just sort of put all the guns out, you know, mm-hmm. I just, I, I made it a from scratch operation, mm-hmm. which is not easy when you have a sized restaurant, right. like the size of, so of commanders. Which was like 300 seat or something. Yeah, the, yeah. They, they're up there, you yeah. know, with the patio and everything else, yeah. it's up there. We, you know, we, we would do a lot of business, particularly Saturday and Sunday brunch. Sunday brunch was insane. Yeah. Um, but then as people got to really know that I was the chef there and, and relationships began to start happening, we were pretty much busy, yeah. you know, every night, you know, yeah. every day. Right. And there was something magical about uh, Ella and I. I mean, beside her yeah. kind of being like my second mom, mm-hmm. um, there was really something magical that we uh, that we had together that really made that restaurant, um, you know, what it was mm-hmm. and and probably what it is today. Right. Um, a lot has changed. Obviously, she's she's passed on, and uh, and Dick, her brother, who was very very influential in the restaurant as well, and I was very close to him mm-hmm. as well. Um, they're truly, you know, hospitality people that taught me a lot about hospitality. Mm-hmm. I, I knew a lot, um, or maybe a little about cooking mm-hmm. uh, and about running the kitchen, but. Hospitality was really something that was really fed to me from them every day about taking care Mm -hmm. of the guest. When you were there, did you ever foresee 
that your life would take on the trajectory that it did? What were like back then? What were you thinking? Like, oh, the sky's the limit, and I'd like to do what? No, um, back then, basically, as our relationship really not only got closer, but as time went on and it was becoming seven plus years or whatever, um, I knew that it was probably time for me to two two things. Either to stay at Commander's Palace and and become uh, maybe change my last name to Brennan, um, or to do my own shingle, which is something that I wanted right. to do. Right. So Ella and I were going to do that together, but I was living and pioneering the warehouse district, mm -hmm. which at the time had no street lights. It was yeah. very very dangerous and mm -hmm. um, a lot of homeless people even back then. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be in the French Quarter because of demographics, et cetera, et cetera. Her success level being in the French Quarter, going all the way back to Brennan's. Mm -hmm. So her and I decided, well, you know what? That's it's not going to happen together. But I'm in full support of what you want to do. Yeah. The only unfortunate thing is what she probably never realized is that every bank that I went to, they wouldn't give me the money to do my own restaurant because they didn't want to cross. Ella Brennan. Ooh, okay. So um, she had some clout. It became yeah. <laughs> so it became very difficult. Finally, the most conservative uh, financial institution in New Orleans at the time, the Whitney Bank, now mm -hmm. Whitney Hancock. Mm -hmm. um, I did a business proposal for these guys, and they they were like, "Okay, wow, all right, we'll we'll give you the money." Uh, it, it wasn't crazy money back then. Probably yeah. was not like it is now. Yeah. Like you build a restaurant today, it's insane. Right. Um, and across the street from where I lived was mm -hmm. this spot that I had my eye on, mm -hmm. which is Emeralds, the flagship, mm -hmm. which is thirty three years later still wow. still there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And not only still there, but what makes me very proud is it's it's still evolving. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's where restaurateurs, chefs, mm -hmm. um, I consider myself a restaurateur as much as a chef. Mm -hmm. I think that's where stagnation comes in when you just keep doing the same old thing and you're not really exciting the staff mm -hmm. or not exciting, more importantly, the customer. Mm -hmm. um, then mediocrity begins to set in, mm -hmm. and that's when mm -hmm. things the death might— knell. that That's when mm -hmm. it could be deadly. Right. Uh, fortunately for me now— um, just a few months ago, EJ, my son, has become the chef patron of the restaurant. So uh, as young as he is, he's he's really taken over the restaurant and is uh, doing amazing things, mm -hmm. amazing things. And the thing is, Lisa, is that, as you know, he and I have two different styles. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm a little old school and a little old classic and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, new American cuisine. He reads my books from cover to cover to mm -hmm. make sure he's doing things correct from that perspective. But he has he has unbelievable training. Yeah. So he you know he worked for me starting as a young boy. I'll never forget we were having dinner at uh, Daniel Boulou's restaurant, Cafe Boulou, and he was about thirteen. And he told uh, his mom and I. He said, "Look, I." This said 13. Mm -hmm. He's, I, I figured out what I'm going to do. And we look, Alden and I looked at each other and, and we said, okay. And he said, I'm going to be a chef. Mm -hmm. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. You, you sure about that? I mean, you, I don't think you know what you're getting into. And he's like, I am going to be a chef. So, um, you know, we kept working together and did a lot of magical things together. He, he was involved with me of opening the new restaurants, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, he saw it from the ground up. And then we said, you know, we had to make a deal. So it was like, look, <clears throat> you're going to have to get out of the nest and you're going to have to, you know, let the wings fly a little bit here. So I think you should look at, you know, on somebody else that you can call a mentor mm -hmm. and, um, so long story short, he worked two summers at Le Bernardin in New York, mm -hmm. um, three Michelin star, considered mm -hmm. probably definitely one of the mm -hmm. top five restaurants mm -hmm. in America, if not the best restaurant in America. Eric Repair, the chef owners, 
an incredible human being and took EJ under his wings. EJ at the time was 16, and he was born in New York, but he went and lived back in New York alone. Wow. Working at, okay. at Working at La Brona Den. So he worked two summers for Eric. Wow. He worked a few weeks for Danielle at Danielle and Cafe Boulou. And then he came back, helped me get Coastal squared away and open and reopen, et cetera. And then he went to culinary school. He decided, uh, you know, he graduated early from high school. Uh, he also graduated early from college. So he went to Johnson & Wales, which you're, is you're, where I went. Mm-hmm. And um, he was really, really well accepted. Um, still has a relationship with the dean and some people there. He's That's the way EJ, you know, sort of operates, oh, as yeah. you know. Yeah. And then uh, when he graduated, he he said, you know, Dad, I'm I'm going to move I'm going to move to Europe. And I said, okay, where? And he said, I'm going to go to London. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move to London. Um, he moved there. We have some some family there, so it wasn't like he was totally alone. Um, and he went and worked um, several months at Core mm-hmm. uh, for Claire Smith, which mm-hmm. is another three Michelin star restaurant. Uh, while he was doing that, um, he spent a couple of weeks in Lisbon with Harinke and uh, worked in a couple of his restaurants, came back, worked for Claire again, and some other places in London, mm-hmm. uh, Club Bossier, a few other places, really nice spots. Mm-hmm. But Claire was, like Eric, a, a true mentor. Mm-hmm. And her chef, his name is Danny Bones. Um what a name, right? <laughs> um, he was a big influence on on mm-hmm. EJ as well, mm-hmm. and and really took EJ sort of under his wing to where he then recommended EJ to go work at Fronson. Mm-hmm. So EJ moved to Sweden and worked at Fronson, which um, is considered mm-hmm. for sure probably one of the top three restaurants in the world. Um, particularly since you know the retirement of Il Bouli. Uh, Fronson is an amazing restaurant. They just opened a branch in London mm-hmm. at Harrods. So uh, EJ was just really... Wow. Uh, yeah. And then um, after he did that, it was like, okay, it's... Um, I think he got great training and uh, certainly not under dad's wing, but now it's time to come back home and uh, it's time to go to work. Mm-hmm. So he went to Emeralds, never... Uh, a title in mine, and I never like pushed a title at, in mine at all. It mm-hmm. just so, it just so happened it evolved as a few weeks went by, and he just sort of went in, and then he fit in, and then he did more than fit in, and he just like sort of took control. Um, and now he's the chef patron. He's running. He's running the. He's running the restaurant, and mm-hmm. he's doing an amazing job. We we've, we've changed a lot of the formatted emeralds. Um, now the main dining room is strictly tasting menu, mm-hmm. both seasonal and um, uh, and traditional. Um, then there's the bar, which is now there's no more private rooms. So the bar and the private rooms now have, has turned into the salon. Mm-hmm. So that menu is where you can order a la carte mm-hmm. and a lot of those great yeah. dishes and a lot of dishes that he and his team have created. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still have David Slate as my culinary director, but... You know, David has um, not only influenced EJ, but he's backed up and just let yeah. EJ do his thing, and he's wow. he's doing it. Well, let me ask you this. So he's um, culinary royalty because he's your son, and then he has chefed in the greatest of the greats. What did some of those chefs say when they actually were in the kitchen with him and saw him doing his thing? Well, he still has an incredible relationship with Eric Repair. Mm-hmm. They speak probably once a week. Uh, Were I, they blown I, away? Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, Eric just, you know, we, we're good friends. So we had a conversation last week, and he was just like, I told you I've been wanting to come to New Orleans, and I'm telling you that I'm coming to New Orleans, and I'm definitely coming to New Orleans now that I see what EJ's doing. It's really, really amazing. I have a customer of mine, uh, uh, not to flash any names, but uh, who was with a celebrity, uh, pretty well-known celebrity, and they were dine, They dined last night at Emeralds, 
And this morning I got this incredible email from him. He's been a customer of mine for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And today I get an, an email from him this morning that he and Lawrence had this amazing dinner and they were blown away in the tasting menu and EJ and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like... Well, you got to be proud. Yeah, I, I oh, very much so. Oh, my gosh, you got to be proud. But I also know that he hasn't quite... He hasn't quite come completely out of the out of the box yet. Yeah, he's going to come. Um, he's waiting for this renovation that we're getting ready to do. We're going to oh. close for a month in July. Uh, we're renovating the restaurant, primarily the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, he's been involved with with all of that okay. uh, from the start, uh, both in the front of the house and the back of the house. So it's going to be pretty spectacular when we reopen. And that's when I think EJ is going to really flex. Yeah, that's when I think okay. he's going to come out of the out of the box. Wow. Well, I mean, he's so young and he's so accomplished and he's so well spoken. I mean, I think the world man, but doesn't everybody think the world of EJ? I'm um, very Just about, proud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you guys did a good job no, well, with both you. he and Meryl, your beautiful kids. Yeah, pretty amazing. So you taught him, I think I read something somewhere, like when he was six or something, he was making French toast or whatever, and that was amazing. So, I mean, he's been cooking since he was younger than 13, Very right? much so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, no. like I said, he grew up in the business. So, right. you know, he's been he's been in the kitchen since he was five or six years old. Yeah. You know, and in the beginning, you know, he, he would have the towel over his shoulder and he <laughs> would go into the dining room. And I thought for the... For a, for a while, I uh -huh. thought he was going to be in the front of the house. I didn't think he was going to be uh -huh. in the kitchen. I thought he was going to be in the front of the house because mm -hmm. he really would engage with the guests and really just, yeah, you know. Yeah, he's got personality uh, plus. I mean, yeah. but then all of a sudden when he made this decision that it was definitely going to be in the kitchen. Yeah. And, you know, I I work with him still. You know, I'm still working at Emeralds and um, running the company, but um, – when I work with him now, I kind of step back, Lisa, and I, I just watch him uh, sort of how he handles the staff, sort of mm -hmm. how he, he he's a very motivating, mm -hmm. uh, he's yeah. a very motivating guy. Yes. What he does with his team, he's yeah. got somebody uh, who's working on uh, ingredients 50 mm -hmm. miles or less from the restaurant. Yeah. He's sourcing all of these things out. It's yeah. just amazing to wow. see to see him operate, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, just about, I don't know, four years ago, seems like four or five years ago, I saw him, you know, performing in the band at Seaside yeah. School right. and, like, just to see, like, what he accomplished. Yeah, he's an amazing musician, too. Yeah, he is, is a good a, you musician. Know, he's really yeah, very crazy. talented. So what does it feel like um, for you? This is just a crazy question that I had asked you earlier, too. Like, you know, the guy who's known as Emerald, the one name you're, you're known all over the globe. You have such high, um, you know, celeb quotient yourself. Um, what is it like for you? To, can you ever find anywhere to go where, like, you can actually really escape so that people aren't Yeah, my talking? boat. <laughs> oh, yeah, out in the deep blue sea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's about Just it. Just me and Flipper. That's about it. <laughs> okay. Well, good thing you have a good boat. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, it's, you know, it has its good things and it has its bad things, yeah. you know. I right. mean, there are uh, flattering moments. And yes, there, and, and, then and there are moments annoying. like, come on, yeah, you know, right. I'm, I'm just trying to eat with my family yeah, here, right. you know. So segueing on the whole boat thing, so let's segue right into um, Carnival Cruise uh, Lines and what you're doing with that, because that's fun. Well, I've just been named January um, the Chief Culinary Officer for all of Carnival Cruise Lines. That's crazy. So congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. So it started out to be they asked me about five years ago if I would do um, a restaurant on one of their ships. So um, we created this Emeralds Bistro. It's sort of very New Orleans, very New Orleans slash French Quarter feel. Mm -hmm. The menu is very, very simple but solid. Mm -hmm. Poor boys, boudin, gumbo, mm -hmm. a lot of cold seafood, mm -hmm. shellfish, oysters, of course, barbecue shrimp, signature items. And I thought when we were doing this, I thought, oh, boy, I'm, I'm not really good at this because as soon as I leave 
that I'm paranoid about, like, how they're going to deliver my, my food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I work with their team, and it was really refreshing to me because predominantly their culinary team are all from India. Oh. And so the way that it works is their top guys come to New Orleans, and my chefs and I, we train them for a week or oh. two. Hmm. Just the dishes that we're going to do on the show. We do some cultural things to, so that they get a little feel yeah. of the culture of New yeah. Orleans and Louisiana, but we just kind of focus on, on the food. Then they go back, and then I go on the ship, and I, then I go taste, taste the food. And I was blown away the first time that I did this process because they were spot on. They're very passionate. Mm-hmm. They're very good culinarians. Uh, and, you know, sailing on a ship three months on, one mm-hmm. month off is not for everybody. I mm, can no, tell right. you that. <laughs> Certainly not for me. Right. Uh, I got to get off after about three days. So yeah. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. done. Uh-huh. But it's fun. Mm-hmm. So, long story short, we're getting ready now to have our third bistro, three different ships. But in January, the president, who's a lovely lady, mm-hmm. very smart, a brilliant lady, she uh, said, I want you to be the chief culinary officer for the for, for all of Carnival Cruise What Lines. is the fleet? How many is that? A lot. <laughs> so, okay. as I said, I'm getting ready. Yeah. Oh, we're getting ready. Uh-huh. Alden and I, Meryl, yeah. um, Maggie, Jen. We're getting ready to go to Barcelona next week. Okay. Uh, where they're building a new ship called Venencia, mm. which is going to be uh, three Italian ships uh, that we that we bought, uh, that Carnival bought. And so I just got done doing all, mostly uh, all the food for that ship. So we're going okay. for that reason to check out the restaurants, okay. to check out all the menu items. I've been working on it with their team and their director of food and beverage. Great people, but um, you know that's that's what it is. I'm just having fun. They they come up with the menus and then they send me the menus, photographs of the menus, uh, descriptions of the menu items, so that you know I have I can basically almost taste the food. Right? Yeah, yeah, wow. Visually and you know just mentally, yeah. and then um, I say you know why are you doing um, why are you doing an Indian pumpkin soup right at sea you know why you you're in the middle of the gulf why are you using tilapia yeah. or yeah, right. whatever right bamundi yeah. and so i make changes and fluff it and then i work with them again yeah and it's we'll see what happens it's so far so good it's been wow. it's been a great experience so it's a celebrity too the cruises right too and then who'd you say shaq was also part of well, it well shaq is the chief fun officer <laughs> Oh. And he is a riot. Okay. He is absolutely a riot. They're really trying to add, um, Carnival is going through a, a, an amazing change. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know what kind of reputation I had prior or before or whatever, but I know what they're trying to do, particularly with the president that's running things right now, Christine. Yeah. She's really moving and shaking things around. And Carnival is going to new heights. They're yeah. in, their entertainment, yeah. their facilities, their shopping, now their restaurants, their fun, you know, what Shaq brings is, as the fun yeah. chief fun officer. Right, wow. Is all the things that are that right. are fun to do. Right. Sounds like um definitely luxury up in the game. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 been a great experience. Yeah. And the and the people have been just extraordinary. That's amazing. So then you've got that going on, which is huge. Congratulations. Um so fun to be going there too next week. That's amazing with your kids and um, Meryl's graduating. Yeah, I wish and I Alden. Could, yeah, yeah, I wish I could go. Uh, I wish EJ could come, but yeah, he's running he, restaurant. He's got a, right, exactly. Right. Oh my gosh, he's in the trenches. So um, on the heels of that, how many shows did you do for Roku? Like a fair amount, and you're going to do a second season? Yeah, I just too, right? did a second season. Yeah. I just finished actually last week. Okay. So I just got done doing um, twenty new tailgating shows yeah. and. Uh, 21 new cooking shows. Wow. The interesting thing about Roku is that they bought the library for Emerald Live and Essence of Emerald. Oh. So now 
you oh. can basically have like an emerald channel on oh. Roku. Okay. You can actually stream and either see old Emerald Live shows or Essence of Emerald. You could see new Emerald oh. Cook shows or Emerald ta- tailgating shows. Wow. And um, we we changed this season. We we just changed. We, we shot it in the Botanical Gardens at City Park, uh-huh. which is absolutely yep, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful setting. Um so we'll see what happens. You know, I'm scheduled for one more season. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. But that's a lot, too. When yeah. you say you're not that busy, that's a lot. Well, I used to do 90 Emerald Live shows a year. 90? 90. And, and 80 Essence of Emerald shows. Oh, my God. Back when. Yeah, so this is Oh, this like, is like child's play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do okay. two shows a day. It's like... Oh, okay. Um, Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, wow, wow. But um, it's been fun. Yeah. So how many restaurants do you have right now? Well, we have two in New Orleans. We yep. have Emeralds, the flagship, and Merrill, yep. uh, named after Merrill. Mm-hmm. Uh, two in Las Vegas, yep. um, Delmonico Steakhouse, yep. mm-hmm. which uh, just celebrated um, its 24th year. Okay. And Emeralds Fish House in EMGM, yep. which is t- 25 years old. That's amazing. And then uh, here, Coastal. Yeah. So five restaurants. Um I have a okay. license in, in the New Orleans airport called Emerald's Table. Yeah. And then the Carnival Cruise Line uh, that we just talked yeah. about. So much. So um, we, like I said, we're, we're renovating Emeralds. Uh, we have a renovation scheduled next year for the Fish House in Vegas. Yeah. Not that it needs it. Right. The thing about Las Vegas is if, if you don't renovate every other yeah. few years, yeah. They think you're like stale because right. everything is so yeah. technicolor. Yeah, every, yeah, everything is so you know bubbly. And, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's okay. That's good. Uh, so um, we're going to do that, and then uh, EJ and I, uh, um, he's going to be my partner. We're going to uh, oh, do a restaurant in New Orleans called Thirty Four, since I'm the third and he's the fourth. I love it. Uh, and it's going to be a very hip Portuguese Spanish tapas bar. Love it. Not just a bar, restaurant. Right. When will the that be? The real open? deal. When will that be open? Uh, you know, it's been a slow process. Um, um, it's, a year? Yeah, yeah, I would say I'm hoping for the end of the year. Yeah. But it may be more like spring. Mm-hmm. But we've already we've had the space for already a year. Mm-hmm. That's how slow the process is right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, well, things you know, are slow. In New Orleans. To get built. Everything's yeah. like so slow right now. So with all of that you have going on, you also run a very successful um, foundation bearing your name, Emerald Lagasse Foundation, which 20, is celebrating be 20 21 years. years. Oh, tw- okay, 21. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, trying to win the Super Bowl, you have to have a great team. So right. I have Brian Kish, who's the yeah. president of the foundation, and about nine other staff members who they do a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do four events, basically, which that's about 95, 98% of the financial backing for the foundation comes from those events. Carnival events. So it isn't like, yeah. um, you know, some guy writing a check for, right. you know, I, I wish, but yeah. we, don't You're working that, we don't have that luxury right. yet. Yeah. Yeah, we have Carnival Event, which is our big one. In New Orleans. Always in November, mm-hmm. the night before Boudin and Beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's Line, Vine, and Dine, which is usually happens in January, February. Yeah. That happens in Fort Lauderdale. Right. It's a mini uh, fishing tournament mm-hmm. slash fun weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of folks from Destin go, mm-hmm. go to that. Mm-hmm. And then um, we have Chichi Miguel, which is right here in our backyard, which is, you know, it turned out to be a, a backyard barbecue for winemakers. Uh-huh. Then I got involved several years ago and then Mike and Val who really started yeah. Mike Thompson is he's Chi Chi. Yeah. But he and his wife Val did it in their backyard for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And then it just be, became overwhelming for them. Right. So the foundation took it. took it over. Now we have it. It's it's bigger but not crazy right. in size. Right. We had this year about four hundred people. Yeah. Uh, and it's very successful. Yeah, it's good. Wherever we do events, 80% of the monies stay in that community. So like Chi Chi, yeah. 80% of the yeah. monies 
stay here in, yeah. in the greater Destin area. Mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale, yeah. we're partnered with Dan Marino and his foundation. Mm-hmm. 80% of the money stays in the Fort Lauderdale mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. New Orleans um, is the backbone, but it goes on. So we have a legacy pr- uh, program that's happening right now called Emerald's Teaching Gardens. That's mm-hmm. a, basically a school, mm-hmm. cooking school slash teaching garden. So we're te- right. teaching these kids where that comes from. Right. I mean, they don't understand that like right. a green bean comes from, from a the plant gr- right. that grows in the soil. Right, and- right. Wow. So tell me what your thoughts are on like how the culinary scene has changed over the years. Like, can you believe like how many people became like sort of celebrity chefs after you? You know, like it, it turned into where food became celebrity uh, minded. Well, uh, that's what they tell me, but I don't know. Um, You know, I. But you know a lot of them. Well, I I know most of them, um, if not all of them. But, you know, everybody has a different different approach or Mm -hmm. a different angle. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you know, like I said to you earlier, what I do is really from the heart and soul. Right. It's not being, it's yeah. not commercialized. Yeah, yeah, it's not, I'm not doing it to be on the cover of the Rolling Stones magazine. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. just, I'm doing it because it has meaning. These kids have meaning, yeah. which is why I have the foundation. Right. My restaurants have meaning because it's my heart and soul, it's right. my blood. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now EJ's involved. M- Merrill's graduating and. Mm-hmm basically graduated and is off to Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. So Alden's very happy. That's her alma mater. Alma mater. So, mm-hmm. Oh, um, she'll love it. You'll be spending a lot of time at Ole Miss. Um, <laughs> that's what they tell me. <laughs> you will be. That's what they tell me. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. Well, we have all these cookbooks behind you right here. Yeah. That um, you all, Is there a new one in the works? Um, EJ and I are working on one right now for uh, hopefully for the completion and in preparation for the uh-huh. 35th anniversary of Emeralds. So we're sort of doing this uh, okay. old and new ah. sort of. He has half the book oh. kind of new, uh-huh. and I have half the book that's, I'm not going to say old because yeah. I'm, I'm not old. Correct. It's just, um, yeah, and, and it's certainly not dated or my food's not dated. No. It's just, um, you know, but then again, what's his his signature dish? One of his signature dishes right now is a dish that I did 34 years ago to put on the menu at Emeralds. It's a smoked salmon cheesecake. Oh, yeah? Except EJ's smoked totally refined cheesecake. it. Oh. And now it's got, you know, about that much layer of caviar on top of it. Okay. So we have our own label of caviar, uh-huh. uh, a sturgeon, and uh-huh. some fun stuff that we're doing there. But, um, you know, it's a... You got to have fun. It's. Oh. I look around in your environment, yeah. and it's like everybody's having fun. Yeah, we got to have fun. You have to have fun when you work really hard, and Absolutely. you have to have passion. Because 100%. without passion, you can't do anything. I could never do anything without passion. I agree with you. It's I can feel. teach anybody how to cook if they have the passion of wanting to yeah. want to learn how to cook. Want it really bad. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this is a crazy left field um, question for you. What do you think of Martha Stewart being on the cover of Sports Illustrated? Did you see that? <laughs> I did. I know your friends. Oh, I know. So this I, is the greatest guy to ask this question. Well, <laughs> listen, if that's what you want to do at 81 years old, knock Go your lights out. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think that, you know, whatever Martha does, she does it. She, she does it, you know, as well yeah. as anybody else is going to do it. Right. She really did it. I mean, she tried all, you know, she's talking about all these outfits that she had to yeah. put on and all yeah. this, you know. I bet she had a ball. I'm sure, I'm she, sure did. she did. I guarantee yeah. she did. Yeah. Um so um, there are other pictures uh-huh. that maybe the average person hasn't seen. Oh, outtakes. Yeah, there's some oh, outtakes. Oh, you, you saw them? Well, I, I mean, I, I guess they're going to make a special out of it or something, right? Isn't oh. that what they do, right? They, yeah. <laughs> yeah they make it Behind a, the scenes? Yeah, it's a special. Oh. I can't wait to see special it, Special edition. Oh, my yeah. God. Well, she does look damn good. I'll tell you yeah, that. I mean, at 81 years yeah, old. Yeah, looking I mean, good. Come on. Totally. That's right. My goodness. Um, so, thing is, is what's next? You know, gee, I don't know. Swimsuit. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's breaking some um, boundaries for breaking sure. Breaking news. Breaking news for sure. So, um, what else can we talk about? Um, you 
traveling, you know, you've got your travel coming up. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, like EJ, you know, as I was telling you, for many, many, many years, I was, you know, I was in the box and I couldn't, yeah, couldn't. really do anything or yeah. really have a lot of family yeah, time or right. travel time, et cetera, other than when I was traveling for, for, for work or events. And uh, now, you know, all of my trying to, uh, the last couple of years, we're trying to, Trying to get out a little bit yeah, more and try to, try to do some things, yeah, you know. So we love London. Yeah. Um, I love London. Looking for, yeah, London's really it's exciting cool. right mm -hmm. now. I'm I really love Lisbon. Mm -hmm. I love Portugal in general. Mm -hmm. um, I love Porto and, uh, you know, the south and, mm -hmm. um, you know, who doesn't like Italy. Right, um, right. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like Spain. I'm, I'm going to go back to Spain. Yeah. Um, in a few weeks after this trip, yeah, that's where Meryl wants to go on okay. a senior trip. I love it. So we're going to uh, Madrid, mm -hmm. and then uh, she wants to go to Ibiza. Oh. So have you been to Ibiza? No, I have not. It's pretty wild. Really? Okay. Yeah. I have not been. Yeah, it's... Let me know how it is. Have you been? Yeah. Oh, you've already been. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I um, haven't been on... The wild side. Okay. The you going on the wild side this time? Well, Maybe. I'm, I'm probably going to have to at least <laughs> once. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I also would be remiss if I don't thank you for um, actually doing that great thing you did for us where you were the chef and your team at the show home. That, well, that we was, had here. Th that was a lot of fun. Okay, thanks for doing that. that I was appreciate a lot of it fun. because you really made it like just something over the top. And Julian Lennon, you know, was our celeb, and you are our celeb too. And Julian was really looking forward to meeting you. And I think, you know, you guys had met that night. I thought it was a magical night. I, I did really think did. It was so I, different. I, I thought you had a. I thought you had a really great crowd. Yeah. Um. Probably most people you knew by name. Yeah. I knew probably half of you them did. by name. Easy, Lee. Um, mm -hmm. The house, the setting of the house was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the second floor being, you know, the spotlight where the kitchen mm -hmm. was and that outdoor space. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a really it was magical, magical night. The only thing that you and I couldn't control was the weather. Yeah, but it was good. Do you good. remember? It got, it got kind of hot. Yeah. It um, hot. I mean, it cooled down as the evening progressed, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but it was hot there for, for a little while. We well, didn't there were so that. many people. Well, that too. All the people were taking up the air and the oxygen. Well, that's what you wanted to do. <laughs> but, but you want a party that has too many people at it. I right. mean, no matter what someone tells me is that's what you want for a party. Right. And so this is a funny joke that I had told you earlier, you know, like a part of my like understanding of like your your stardom, um, your starlight in that Julian, you know, all these, he said he was with Emerald at this party and he posted on his social marketing and he gets like 20,000 comments, like uh, the first 24 hours after the party. And I'm reading them all. And 90% of them are, you got to meet Emerald. Oh my God. What was he like? <laughs> oh, what did he cook? And I'm like, wow, these are people that are from Germany, London, <laughs> and like Emeralds at our, at our party here in Santa Rosa Beach and Seagrove. And it was just like... So like what are you big. doing another one of those? Oh, good Lord. Not for a long time. Really? <laughs> well, I do a party, but not do a show home for a while. Yeah. It, it still takes a lot out of you. It's a two-year commitment. And Ooh, I had just come off one, the that. two years before, like where you're going through the whole thing and marketing it. I'll do a party, though. Yeah. But um, a fundraiser or something like that or a party that I think would be super fun. And you could tell that people were starved for something like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you don't have to do that. But if you felt like it. You know, you know, there's a there's a market out there right. <laughs> for it. That whole intimate thing. The more intimate people can get. Uh -huh. So I've I've seen V Magazine. Obviously, I'm a big fan. Thank you. But I've really have seen it evolve tremendous. What what's going on? Well, it's. 50, I mean, it's obviously planned, and it's, and yeah. you know, it just doesn't happen to no. happen. But I, I really feel like the, the magazine is. It's getting a little thicker because it's getting yeah. a lot better. It's really, really interesting. Thank you. Uh, what, it's what you fifteen guys are years. Well, you have a great team. I, be, I do have a great team. They are all fantastic, and um, we are running, you know, like like a team. I'm the quarterback. Yeah, you know, same thing. Um, so, do you guys brainstorm about oh, like yes. what the every, what the stories? Are? Every That's issue. Great. It's twelve times a year. I'm just trying to understand the process. Well, yeah. I, well, you I, had I, a magazine. I, I find it fascinating. I don't have a magazine. Well, you did. 
No, I didn't. No, you didn't have a magazine. I, Martha had a magazine. Oh, Martha had a magazine. Just a part okay. Of it. okay. Well, yes. I mean, we brainstorm every. We have a men's issue coming out in a week and a half. So, how do you decide that? The, just the team? Oh yeah. Based you know on what's the, funny? Based um, on the calendar? No, no. Just based on it's all organic. It's all like our. No one's telling us what to do here. Right. We are literally creating it ourselves, and always have been. It's um. We've had people on the cover. Um, this cover is beautiful. Oh, thank you. This is the current issue, right? This is it, and you're in this issue. So, so this is the article that you're in for your twenty. Well, I just, I just find it fascinating. Yeah, the cookies are cool. So, like, it's not people. No. So it's. I know, but it had to be cakes. gorgeous. It's, it's cookies. cookies. It's cookies. <laughs> cookies. Yeah, I saw this on Instagram. It was a girl that did organic cookies, and I'm like, that's so cool. And then we feature her. She's in LA, right? Mm. So we, we have the world changed so much since like what we used to know magazines to be. When you have like unbelievable photographs at your fingertips, you have social media, and you can communicate to the entire world, right? The magazine business, and I don't think a lot of people understand this, even in the magazine business, changed a lot because you could do so much more in the last seven to eight years than you could do before because the world opened up. So the person in right. London or I, you know, they're, they're following us. We have writers all around the globe. Yeah, and they, they're they interested about what's happening in other places, not just... They are, but we're writing about all places too, you know? Um, so... Is food very popular? It is popular, and so are homes. And homes. Homes are very popular, but then like... Like the interior of homes. Interior, exterior, anything. But that happened. That was a, a anomaly, I think, that happened. Everyone loved homes, veranda, homes and garden and all that kind of stuff. But when the pandemic happened and everyone like had to stay in their house and they fell in love with their house, the home became a celebrity. Yeah. And so we fe featured a lot of homes during the pandemic. But then, you know, you can tell when the pendulum is swinging and it get, gets played out. We've had people on kitchens the- Kitchens are still popular, though. Oh, kitchens. Yeah. Well, then we have our book called Cook by V that's coming out that you and EJ are in and your story's in that. And that comes out in about a month. And then what the magazine business did is it got us into the book publishing business, uh, it was just like kind of this organic progression toward that. So we just finished um, a coffee table book for the Seaside Style that that's going to be out in a week. We have a novel that we've just published, and then we're publishing Cook, and you know, on and on and on. So, but all of this that you're, you're seeing is um, like we did it our way. You know the way, well, that's like the way, old fashioned. That's the way um, it should be. There's no backing. How to figure out like how to always hustle, how to always stay in business. But we're tri we're outliers. You know, we're yep. not doing. But then we're in you know airports and LaGuardia and New York is and it, Chicago and all that. Is it so. mostly mailing list? It's mailing and it's also you know distribution throughout the country and, 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 and all like that you too. said in airports and airports and like book. key targeted airports or airports that we want to gain like you know some some traction and emerging feeder markets. It's all been an evolving process over That's time. Great. But we did just win um, top fifty best luxury magazines in the world a month ago. Congratulations! Thank you. That's awesome. And here we are. In well, Santa Rosa it's, Beach, it's really, right? it's, it's really fabulous. Oh, so thank keep you. Doing I what so you're doing. I appreciate that a lot. Fifteen means, more years. Oh great. God, no! Please tell me no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Fifteen more years? No, because time is going so fast. Yeah, it is. It just it's clips amazing. along, especially when you start getting older. It does fly. Well, you know, and then you start talking about friends and family and birthdays and et cetera, and. Then you realize how fast really time is yeah. like going. Like I can't believe like Meryl's going to college. You know, it's, it's yeah. amazing. His EJ, you know, yeah, EJ ruling the, the world at nineteen. At yeah, it's unbelievable. Crazy. Well, congratulations to you, your family, and everything. Thank you. I think you're in like a great chap next chapter where you're just doing it your way and like you know all. Yeah, of yeah. I mean, I'm kind of that's that's basically I'm not doing anything that I don't really right. want to do. Right. And, there's a lot more that I could do, but don't want to do. Right. And like I said, I'm, it. I'm doing it because it means something that has meaning yeah. uh, and has, uh, you know, heart and soul and, uh, you know, or spiritual things. Yeah. And yeah. it's important. Yeah. So we're going to, yeah. you know, we're going to keep going on. Right. Well, this podcast is Conversations with Heart and Soul, so I'm with you. I love it. <laughs> All the way. I love it. Emerald, thank you for being here. I know Come your time on. is more thank precious you. than anything. I appreciate you being here. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thank you. It's great seeing you and your team, by the Th way. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much. Emerald in the house. We're so happy. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. 
Thank you to our sponsors, Rose and Company. Owners David and Carrie De Gregorio have just hit it out of the park with the most gorgeous boutique in Grand Boulevard. They are the purveyors of the most unique and gorgeous, hard to find flowers and curate the most unique species of roses and flowers. And there's a lot of artistry involved in it. If you have a special occasion and you want to show somebody how much you love them, you've got to get your floral arrangements from them. And they trick out our studio and make it look beautiful every single time we have our podcast. And they have unique bespoke items and they also carry Versace China, which is just adorable. Like who doesn't need that, right? And so if you want to visit them, go to Grand Boulevard or if you want to order flowers online, go to their website, rosencompanyflowers.com. So do you guys like instantly just fly these margaritas in? They're specially, they were specially made from you, she said. Emerald's coming in and we Caroline. made like a really good margarita. <laughs> <laughs>